Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to all who are worshiping with us here in person and online on this, the second Sunday of Lent. If you're here this morning, it means either you did remember to change your clocks or else if you forgot to change them, you were confused about everything in being here this morning. I'm very glad to return and lead worship this day while Pastor Brommer is off this weekend. Call to your attention the announcements that are in our bulletin today. In our Bible readings for today, we are reminded that through our baptism, we have been brought into a relationship with God that endures. Let us prepare for worship with our prelude. In the name of God, who makes a way in the wilderness, walks with us, and guides us in our pilgrimage. Amen. Amen. Holy One, we, we confess, confess that we have wandered far from you. We have, we have not trusted your, your promises, promises as we have we ignored, ignored your prophets in our own day. day. We, we have squandered, squandered our inheritance of grace. grace. We, we have, have failed, failed to recognize, recognize you in our midst. Have, have mercy on us. Forgive, forgive us and turn us again to you. Teach us to follow in your ways. Assure us again of your love and help us to love our neighbor. Amen. Beloved in Christ, the word draws near to you and all who call out to God shall be saved. In Jesus, God comes to you again and again, 
and gathers you under wings of love. In Jesus' name, your sins are forgiven. God's journeys with you and teaches you how to live in love.
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. of the cross, you promise everlasting life to the world. Gather all peoples into your arms and shelter us with your mercy that we may rejoice in the life we share in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from the 15th chapter of Genesis. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring. And so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and count the stars, if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Then he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to possess. But he said, O Lord God, how am I to know that I shall possess it? He said to him, Bring me a heifer three years old, a female goat three years old, a ram three years old, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. He brought him all these and cut them in two, laying each half over against the other, but he did not cut the birds in two. And when birds of prey came down on the carcasses, Abram drove them away. As the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and a deep and terrifying darkness descended upon him. When the sun had gone down and it was dark, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch passed between these pieces. On that day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I give this land, from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates. We will read responsively Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers close in against me to devour my flesh, they, my foes and my enemies, will stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, 
my heart will not fear. Though war rise up against me, my trust will not be shaken. One thing I ask of the Lord, one thing I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord, and to seek God in his temple. For in the day of trouble, God will give me shelter, hide me in the hidden places of the sanctuary, and raise me high upon a rock. Even now my head is lifted up above my enemies who surround me. Therefore I will offer sacrifice in the sanctuary, sacrifices of rejoicing. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice, O Lord, when I call. Have mercy on me and answer me. My heart speaks your message. Seek my face. Your face, O Lord, I will seek. Hide not your face from me. Turn not away from your servant in anger. Cast me not away. You have been my helper. Forsake me not, O God of my salvation. Though my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will take me in. Teach me your way, O Lord. Lead me on a level path because of my oppressors. Subject me not to the will of my foes, for they rise up against me, false witnesses breathing violence. This I believe, that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord and be strong. Take heart and wait for the Lord. The second reading is from the third and fourth chapters of Paul's letter to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, join in imitating me and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. I have often told you of them, and now I tell you even with tears, their end is destruction, their God is the belly, and their glory is in their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven, and it is from there that we are expecting a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation that it may be conformed to the body of his glory by the power that also enables him to make all things subject to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Luke, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me, Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day, I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together, as a hen gathers her brood under her wings. And you were not willing. See, your house is left to you. And I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes 
in the name of the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I have such a range of emotions as I watch the videos each day of the unneeded suffering by the people of Ukraine. I have such unkind thoughts about the people perpetuating the war. I fear for what is yet to come. I yearn for a much different world in which to live. My fears and yearnings are much the same as I consider our own country. We are so politically divided. So many people think violence is the answer to problems. We hear daily of the murders in our cities. So far this year, we have had more than 12, 12, shootings at school buildings. There's an increase in the number of hate groups, with Pennsylvania having the fifth most number of hate groups in the country. Such is life for us as citizens of this country and as citizens of this world. In our second reading today, a reading from Philippians, Paul reminds us that we are also citizens of another entity. And as citizens of this other entity, we not only have hope and comfort as we encounter the problems of this world, we also have direction for how to live in this world. After detailing the faults of this world in vivid terms, using terms like God is their belly, their minds are on earthly things, Paul writes, but our citizenship is in heaven. We are citizens, not only of Pennsylvania, not only of the United States, we are also citizens of heaven, that is, we are citizens of God's kingdom. Now, does that mean that citizens of heaven are superior to citizens of the world? No. No, as citizens of heaven, we hold a dual citizenship. We have responsibilities to the community, to the state, to the nation in which we live. It also means we are humans with all of our failings and all of our fears. But we also are part of God's kingdom where we are promised love, care, eternal life. As written in my devotional book this week about this passage, it's not that Paul didn't know we have earthly needs and interests and concerns. He didn't want our interests and concerns and needs to be limited to earthly things. Life is more than we can see. The illustration in our gospel reading for today provides detail about what life is like for us in God's kingdom. When we feel threatened, like a mother hen, Jesus wants to gather us under him and protect us. When we fear because of what we see happening in the world, we know that Jesus is with us, protecting us for eternal life. The story is told of a young man who was very wealthy. 
He had everything a person could want materially. However, he was born with a deformity which left him with what many people would consider an ugly face. Because of his dislike of the way he looked, because of his dislike of his face, he would stay in his house or he would walk around his garden, which was enclosed by a high wall. In the evening, though, he would leave his enclave and walk down by the seashore. One night on his walk, he heard this beautiful music. He hid in the shadows so he could see from where the music was coming from. He saw a young girl playing a violin. Each night he would leave his house, walk down to the seashore, and listen to this young lady play beautiful music. Still he hid in the shadows, not wanting to be seen. He was so moved by this young woman's music that he gave substantial money to his servant and directed the servant to give it to the woman with the violin in order that she could go to the best school of music and become a master violinist. After years of study, the woman returned home and was taken to the house of this man who had paid for her education. The man was standing in his garden. The woman came up behind him, threw her arms around him and said, I love you, I love you. No, said the man, no, it's impossible for you to love me. Still, the woman kept repeating, I love you. The man turned around and said, how can you love me? How can you love me when you see the ugliness of my face? She replied, I am blind. Life may seem ugly to us. Life on earth may seem messy and ugly. Our own lives with our own failings may seem ugly and messy. The story reminds us that in spite of what life seems to us, in spite of what we think about ourselves, God loves us and gathers us under his wings. So we live in two kingdoms. In the earthly kingdom, we are subject to law. In God's kingdom, we are subject to law and gospel. In our earthly kingdom, we vote if we have that privilege. In the other kingdom, we pray. In this earthly kingdom, we have temporary residence. In the earthly kingdom, in the heavenly kingdom, we have eternal residence. In our earthly kingdom, we live by knowledge. In our heavenly kingdom, we live by faith. In the one kingdom, we legislate. In the heavenly kingdom, we worship. On earth, we often live in anxiety. In God's kingdom, we live in hope. As we just said in our psalm, we wait for the Lord. Take heart, be strong. As citizens of the heavenly kingdom, we have hope. Jesus, too, said that we live in the world but do not belong to the world. We belong to the kingdom of heaven, to the family and people of God. As we live in this world with all of its sinfulness, as we live in this world with fear, may we realize the grace and peace that is ours forever as God's people.
And may we continue to seek to make the heavenly kingdom present here on earth. Amen. Each of our prayer petitions concludes with merciful God, and our response is, hear our prayer. Seeking the grace, mercy, and love of Almighty God, we offer our prayers for the church, for people in need, and for all of creation. God of Abraham and Sarah and all Earth's families, Bless your church to be a blessing and bestow your grace to a hurting world. Merciful God, hear our prayer. Teach us to be good stewards of your creation and to love all of the creatures and life within it. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Inspire the leaders of every nation to work for peace and justice for all people. Comfort those who suffer due to conflict, injustice, prejudice, or war. We pray especially for all those suffering in and around the Ukraine. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Grant comfort, healing, and joy to all who are in need. Surround the ill with your presence and strengthen those who care for them. We pray especially for Kay Baker, Susan Bianchi, Jim Bomberger, John Bowerman, Lou Brassard, Fran Buchanan, Donna Dixon, Wally Folkrod, Larry Gibson, Marie Halliday, Carolyn Hess, Rosavina Homasak, Mary Hebner, Courtney Christen, Marilyn Lehman, Diane Lingle, Bill and Laura McEwen, Steve Miller, Margaret Sherrick, Whitney Simmons, Diane Scott, Kathy Sweeney, Christina Terhoon, Marilyn Udell, Nancy Van Kirk, Barb Walker, Mike Welty, and all who we name now in our hearts are allowed. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Lead this assembly in its Lenten journey toward faith, works of love, and prayer. Let those gathered here be fed and nourished by your word. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O oh God, we give thanks for the faithful departed who have joined your saints in light. Let their lives be guides to our own. Give hope to all who mourn loved ones. This day we pray especially for the family of Andrew Kinsinger. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Into your hands, merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray. Trusting in your steadfast love, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please share that peace with those around you.
Let us pray. Extravagant God, you have blessed us with the fullness of creation. Now we gather at your feast where you offer us the food that satisfies. Take and use what we offer here. Come among us and feed us with the body and blood of Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will be done. done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Here is the Lamb who takes away the sin of the world, Happy are they who are called to his supper. Lord, Lord I am not worthy, worthy to receive you, but only say, say the, the word, word, and I shall show you. you. As we share Holy Communion, hear these words. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, given and shed for you. Body and blood of Christ given and shed for you.
Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, accompany our journey through these 40 days. Renew us in the gift of baptism that we may provide for those who are poor, pray for those in need, fast from self-indulgence, and above all that we may find our treasure in the life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever.
Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. To God.